All right, this is Layoff Builder Unleash the Power. Um, I'm Ted Bowman. I work at the um, at Acquia, um, co-maintainer of uh, Layout Builder and Settings Tray. Um, right now, I'm working on Drupal 9 preparation. I'm Ted Bow on Drupal.org and Twitter. Um, part of the uh, Drupal Acceleration team at Acquia. Um, mostly, right now, I'm working on Drupal 9 preparation, update module, making sure modules are compatible with both 8 and 9 at the same time. Um, working on, worked on Layout Builder previously. Um, other stuff that our team does is uh, API first, a lot of work on the REST module, JSON API, worked on the media module. We work on security issues and release management and uh, uh, somebody on our team also works on the lighting distribution. Um, so Layout Builder, uh, what does it do? So I'm going to just get a quick overview of what it does. Um, today is mostly I'm going to do a live demo of, of sort of, yeah, we're using the layout builder. Um, feel free to stop me along the way. So obviously it's a layout builder, flexible layout builder. It previews on the default theme, meaning um, as much as it can, you see the lay as you made the layout, it's in the theme that, that's going to be rendered in. Um, it, it's an easy way to connect your entity displays to other view to views and blocks. Um, it allows per entity layouts or customization, and you can use it as a page building tool also. Um, so it does defaults, so like content templates, so this would uh, take over manage display page. Um, it does overrides, so one-off layoffs, so individual pages can, um, can have their own layouts, uh, landing pages. So these are really just overrides and I'll, a special use case for them, which, which I'll show later. Um, so I'm going to do a live demo. Um, so I have, uh, I have videos of version of this presentation. So if things go terribly wrong, we can look at the videos, but hopefully not. Um, so I'm going to demo using the Umami uh, uh, profile from Drupal 8. It's a great um, way to, for training sessions like this. So I really appreciate all the work that people went into it. I didn't theme this. So the Umami, the Umami theme considers that things are going to be in regions and not necessarily in layout builder. So things might be a little, look a little wonky. If you were going to do something like this, you'd want to theme stuff a little bit for your use case. Can you use layout builder with web forms? What's that? Can you use layout builder with a web form? Yeah, in as much as web forms are nodes. I mean, you can probably arrange stuff. I'm not sure if you can arrange individual elements. It depends how Webform has it set up. Um, so uh, let's look at default uh, templates. So we're going to look at the uh, recipes example in Umami. So Umami is a food magazine. Um, on the left, you have what... This is actually not what comes with Umami now. Right now, actually, Umami has a demonstration of using Layout Builder on recipes. So this is with Layout Builder turned off. And this is like turning on Layout Builder and arranging stuff. So I'm actually going to just sort of rebuild what they built in the Umami demo. But if you're interested in looking at, I think this is the main use case they have for Layout Builder in Umami. Um, if you want to see a um, sort of finished use case of Layout Builder, you can look at uh, install the Umami theme and see what they did for recipes. Um, so basically, um, out of the box, Drupal just gives you a sort of column of fields that you can put in there. You have field formatters, you can have different field formatters, but you can't arrange stuff like, like you see on the, the right. Um, so layouts are created by multiple sections, um, and each section can be different um, number of columns, and the, the column widths are configurable. This allows you to create um, sort of complex layouts, which we'll see today. All right, so let's just dive in. I am going over to my site. And I think I'm actually going to go to recipes and I'm going to turn off layout builder. So, oh, I already turned it off. Okay, so one thing that's weird about um, Umami that a lot of times you don't have to consider for, for layout builder or managed fields in general is uh, for historic reasons they chose to use full content as a configured uh, view mode. A lot of people don't do this, they just leave it as default. So we are so layout builder can be applied to any view mode. It can be applied to all view modes or one view mode. Um, so we're going to take over the full content view modes because when you look at the recipe page, um, it is using the full content. If 
down here, wait, in this place, I think, let's go back to default. If down here they did not have this checked for, um, for full content, then we could just use layout builder on the default and it would show up when you look at a recipe page. But I don't want to mess with the settings too much in a demo. We'll just take the full content, go down to the bottom here, it says use, uh, do we need to make the text bigger? Looks good to me. Okay. Um, we're going to say use layout builder. We're not going to say allow each item to have its own customized layout. We'll look at that later. Um, so this basically means every recipe will have its own um, uh, will have its own layout. The, sorry, every recipe will have the same layout. Um, so we go to manage layout, and um, we're basically shown what happens when you enable Layout Builder on a content type that didn't have Layout Builder enabled is it takes all of the fields in the order that they were and puts them in a big single column. So effectively, if I did nothing at this point and I looked at the recipe, it would look exactly the same because uh, you can think of managed fields as a single section with one column. Um, so if we look back, let me see if the demo of what we want. Uh, we're going to have uh, the categories and tags up at the top, I'm an image, and then I think I actually cut this off, but we're going to have like sort of four little icons here for preparation time difficulty and stuff like that. We're going to have ingredients and then recipe instructions. So to start off, we, we will want one um, big column up at the top because that's where we're going to have our categories, or we're going to have our summary up at the top. So. Um, it's kind of um, daunting when you have all of these different fields and it's hard to tell what they are. And I'm going to show you a way to make that a little bit better in a second. But I'm going to look for the summary, which is probably this field. The other thing weird is it, it doesn't know what values are going to be in there, so it sort of takes the largest value. Then I can see, okay, this is a summary, so I do want this on top. The other way I can tell is I can turn off the preview and it's going to just tell me, okay, this is a summary field. Um, so I'm going to do that for a second just to make things easier. I'm going to add a, another section, and I'm going to add a two-column section, going to make it 50-50. And I have now two new places to place blocks, and I'm going to place the two taxonomy fields, recipe, recipe category field, and the recipe the tags field, I'm going to put them side by side. And then I basically want summary and then recipe category and tags. So I'm going to drag everything else below that into a new two column, um, another two column where I can have image, actually no, I want this to be a three column, where I can have image and then my four icons. So I'm going to have a three column, and this is going to be 50, 25, 25. You can change the widths of the columns later on, but you can't change the number of columns. You have to create a new section and then move stuff into it. So I'm going to add over here. The first thing, op often what you're going to do when you're doing a, um, a, a default layout for, say, recipes, is you're going to have all the fields that you would normally display here. So I know recipe has a media field. So I'm going to put the media image. I'm not going to display the title. I'm not going to display the label. And these are the same field formatters you would see on Manage Display. So if you have special field formatter modules that you like, or if you have modules, I think, like Fences, which allows you to do more things with field formatters, you can still use them inside Layout Builder. Um, and then I'm going to format it as the rendered entity, because this is a media entity. And I will say, I think I know they're using the responsive 3-2 view mode. So I'll have that there. And then I'm going to add a block here for the, actually, I already have the blocks up here. So I'm going to move the, I'm going to go back to show my preview. And I am going to move the preparation time over here. And then I'm going to move the cooking time over here. And then 
difficulty here. And again, when you have uh, when you have the defaults for a particular content type, it's just random values. So it knows that, say, the cooking time is a number, so it picks a random number and puts it in there. Um, and then I'm going to take the number of servings, and I'm going to put it over here. So now I have the sort of four um, four items here, and at the bottom I'm going to take the body field, which is this one, and again. Body fields are kind of difficult to move, so I'm going to turn off, because it has so much text, I'm going to turn off the preview. And I'm going to add a section at the bottom, which is another one column section. And now the body field, which I hope I didn't totally room. Oh. Difficulty field, preparation, body. Do we not have a body field? Did I get rid of it? <coughs> oh. Thanks. All right, I'm going to add this down here, and I think that is pretty much what I have, media field ingredients. Oh, oh, and then at the bottom, after the, ins oh, they actually didn't do it this way. They, they put it as a two column. So two column, I'm going to drag my recipe instructions over, I can't remember which one's which. I'm going to put ingredients over, oh, I already have ingredients somewhere on the page. I'm going to grab my ingredients. field and move it here and then this section actually I'm just going to delete because I didn't actually, oops I'm going to delete this section because I put it there by accident uh, I think this is good I'm going to turn back on the con content preview so I can kind of look at it um, I'm going to save it and I'm going to look at a particular recipe so go back to the site, I'm going to look at our recipes, I'm going to choose a recipe, and put the resolution down a little bit. I got my image, I got summary, I got my four things here. Hmm. I must have messed that up royally. Let's see. Content types, recipe, manage display. Oh yeah, full content. Uh, I'm using layout builder. I feel like I must have put the media image twice in there. <coughs> yes, I did. <coughs> Remove this block. All right. Now this is more sort of what I wanted to see. So we have the summary, we have a, a column for recipe category tags, we have our four items here, and then we have the ingredients and the instructions. Again, I didn't theme this particularly for this, um, for this use case. You'd probably want to consider theme your fields in different areas or different regions. Um, there's a module called Layout Builder Restrictions, which will stop people, you can allow stopping people who are customizing, like customizing individual layouts from putting blocks in certain places if you don't think they'll make sense. Any questions on that for the defaults? Uh, does it become responsive? Yeah. <coughs> so it'll go down like that, yeah. And making, um, making layouts is pretty easy. It's uh, similar to making twig, I mean, it basically is a twig template where you just say, I want to put this region here and this region here, and then you have to kind of define in a YAML what your region names are, yeah? Uh, can you tweak it on the back end if you want to? Tweak, uh, in which? One of this layout, for instance. If something would be messed up, is there a way to go into the YAML or the template? Yeah, well, I mean, you wouldn't want to change cores templates. You could copy cores templates and make them your own and add your own CSS. Well, I mean, because I did that yeah. And this title was slightly out of place, yeah. no matter what I did. So I was wondering how I could go into it, to it in the back end and fix it. Um, back end meaning code? Or? Yeah, somewhere in the code. Yeah. Um, you can get, apply your own CSS to these regions. Oh, you have to do a CSS. Um, so what she's asking yeah. is when you create this uh, layout yeah. of this particular content, yeah. 
it should probably create a template file somewhere in the code, right? Or how does it work? No, it doesn't create. It doesn't create a new. The, the, it doesn't create a new template fi file anywhere. The sections are all dynamic, and they're generated dynamically. So where are they stored? Yeah. The database. Um, they're stored uh, in configuration, depending it, with. Which is in the database. Um, Kind of, yeah. <laughs> but you, yeah, you should not mess with it in the data when it is in the database. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you had an if you had an override like a template that was overriding yep. the display, could it possibly break? So the layout builder. So what happens is if you have a template, you are like have a no dash whatever it is recipe template that will not be in effect when you say use the layout builder. That will not be in effect. If you have templates for individual fields then they would be in effect. Um, so when you take over the entity display in Layout Builder, you're basically saying, I don't want to use the sort of entity level um, template. So the node recipe, the, the templates for nodes on recipes would not be in effect here. Yeah, you would not have that. Um, all right, so hopefully some of those will come a little bit more clear. Let's look at uh, another example. Um, so, I don't, this is a, examples of uh, an, a page I got from the Radix layout module in Drupal 7. So this is just sort of example of like all the layouts you could have made there. Um, you're not going to get that out of the box with Layout Builder, but you sort of combine to make them. So if you look at all these possible layouts, um, then these are the ones that are left that you can make in Layout Builder out of the box. I mean, you can add some your own sections to make it more flexible. But the idea here is, you know, I would make a three column section plus a two column section to do this. And here I would just make one three column section. Here I do one column section, three column section, one column section. Um, out of the box with Layout Builder, you can't do something like this. You can't have one section that goes all the way down across multiple sections here. Um, you can make a template yourself that is this whole thing if you want to. Uh, you can do whatever you want with individual, like if you want a section and you don't think, well, I don't want to do the stacked ones like, like this. I want to add a section and have the section be multiple, span multiple rows. You can make that um, pretty easily. But core is not going to give you that ability out of the box. That What's that? Where would you put that template? Um, you would put that in a theme or a module. Um, there's documentation on how to sort of make them. Um, and looking at cores, um, or Umami, I think, has their own templates, too. Um, if you're, yeah, if you're familiar with making Twig templates for anything else, it's pretty similar, except for how you, you have to define the regions and stuff. Um, all right. Um, all right, so now we're going to look at the example for articles. Um, so I'm going to look at the... Uh, this is a version of Umami that I have not messed with with Layout Builder. If we're going to look at articles, we have uh, over on the left here is the, is the dis node display. And on the right here is the view um, that you use in block layout. And then down below, here you have another view and then you have another um, block and then you have a menu here. So I'm going to show how we can make this all within um, within Layout Builder itself. So this sort of, what I'm going to show you considers that you're going to turn either turn off a lot of regions or say when I'm looking at articles, the blocks that are usually in these regions, I'm not going to show in this region. Um, the sort of advantage of this is it allows you to use Layout Builder in one place to arrange your um, the view of the article, but also a view a, the display of views and maybe other related stuff that usually you'd have to either use something like panels or something like um, or the block layout page which is not really intuitive all right so I'm gonna go back to my site I'm gonna go to my content types and now I'm gonna go to articles uh, I'm gonna go to go to full content again I'm gonna turn off Actually, so I can't turn off Layout Builder right now because I have uh, I have overrides. So overrides are stored in content. So unless I uh, 
remove these overrides, Layout Builder is not going to let me unuse Layout Builder because basically I'd be deleting content right now. So to get around that for the demo, I have a made a view that just tells me show me all of the um, show me all of the nodes that have overrides, and um, it's pretty easy to do. The over the over override field is just uh, it's just a field, and you can say show me where it's not null. So I'm going to look at this one. So this is is an article. So I'm going to go to layout. So we'll get to this in a second. I'm going to refer to defaults, revert. So I'm going to go to content. So now, okay, now I have no recipes that have overrides. So I'm going to go back to content types, go to recipes, manage display. Now it should let me turn off Layout Builder. I'm just turning it off so that we can start from scratch. Uh, another point here is like once you turn off Layout Builder, it's not going to remember the settings for recipe. So um, be careful turning it on and back off. Um, obviously, if you've exported your configuration, you can re-import your configuration. Um, so I'm going to say use Layout Builder. Um, all right. So I'm going to manage Layout Builder. And I'm going to leave most stuff the same here because we already saw how we can make sections in there. But I am going to make a two column section and 50. And I'm going to make this a 6733. So I'm going to actually emulate my sidebar and my theme. And I'm going to make sure when I'm in looking at a recipe, the actual theme sidebar doesn't show up. So what I will do is I'm going to go back to, I really like to use Layout Builder without this show content preview, especially I'm using defaults. It just makes stuff a lot quicker. I'm going to move the summary field up here and then the recipe category and then the tags, media image, uh, media image down here, uh, preparation time. This, I meant to do articles. All right. So we're going to go to articles. Sorry. Uh, I thought, I wondered why I had so many fields. Okay, so we're going to full content. Turn it off here. Confirm. Turn it back. Turn it back on. So I am going to make this two column section up at the top. I actually wanted to be 6733 because I'm I want a small sidebar on the side. I'm going to drag all my fields up here. Body fields. So this one is I just have a lot less fields on my articles. Uh, moderation. I have content moderation on, which is a field. Put that at the bottom. Uh, so over on the side, now I have this sort of area where I can put stuff that's not my node. So right now what I'm going to do is Umami comes with a uh, related no, articles aside, is what they call articles aside. I'm going to use the one that comes with Umami, and that is just going to show me three articles. They're not particularly related to what I'm seeing right now, but let's just see what that looks like. Home side. This is not. Okay, let's go to articles. I'm looking for a particular art article I know I know has tags on it. Mm, maybe not. Okay. So now we have inside the. the um, Inside the layout builder, we have this more featured articles. Um, and, and that actually doesn't, there's nothing that ties it directly to our article. Um, but that's where you, so generally you can see, okay, now I could remove my side regions on my theme and take over everything with layout builder. Any questions on that? Um, but let's say I don't want it to just be any feature, any articles. I want it to be articles that are actually related to the content that I'm viewing here. So I'm going to go back to my layout builder and I'm going to remove this view and I'm going to add a view that I've made uh, for this class or this session. Um, 
and I have two the same. I don't know why, but I'm going to assume this is it. So this one I'm calling articles aside related. Uh, okay, I hope it's the right one. So right now it's actually asking me for uh, a content ID. Um, so what's happening here is in my um, in my view, I've made a contextual filter, and I'm. I told that contextual filter that I wanted a node, um, and I did the specify validation criteria. So if I specify validation criteria in my view, and I say it's a particular entity type or a particular bundle, um, the layout builder is going to know. I'll oh, say, so, okay, you want to you want a node. I know of one node that I have, and that node is the um, that node is the current content that I'm viewing. And what I did here basically is I said for this node that I'm taking as contextual as a contextual filter, exclude it from the list because I want things that are related to the tags of the current node I'm looking at, but obviously I don't want the node itself. I don't want it showing over here. So this is just a sort of way for me to exclude it from display. Any other question on that for the view? So it's over under advanced contextual filter. So I'm going to add this. Um, for contextual filter views, I don't think it can actually do the preview. Let me see. Yeah, it just puts a placeholder usually if there's a contextual filter. Uh, I'm going to save this. Go back to my oatmeal. And hopefully this should change to things that are related that have the tags vegan, vegetarian, oats, breakfast, or dessert when I refresh it. Okay. So I happen to know that this dairy-free chocolate thing is about vegan recipes, and then the mushroom and the carrots articles are about, uh, also have the vegetarian or vegan um, tag. Any questions about that? Anybody want to see the view? Yeah. Okay, let's look at the view. Okay, so. Uh, aside. Okay, so this is the one I placed. Um, so nothing too special about it. Um, I have this content ID contextual filter, and I specified the validation criteria somewhere. Specified validation criteria, and I told it it was content. I didn't actually say whether it was recipe, basic page, or whatever. Um, if I did that, then it would only work if I was viewing a recipe. Right now, I could put this on articles or recipes. The, o the other thing I had to do to make this view work is I said, hey, for this contextual filter, instead of saying equal this ID, say anything but this ID. The problem I'm getting is I have this, you know, your oatmeal uh, thing is obviously going to be related to the tags, but I don't want it to also be here. The other contextual filter I had is, unfortunately right now, um, Layoutbuilder doesn't know of context that you get from any references, so I can't, I can't have that little drop down to say relate it by the tags, but um, Views has this built-in ability to say, hey, if you don't have something for this contextual filter, grab the term ID from the URL. Then it has this option to say, actually load the filter from the node page, this is good for related taxonomy blocks. So I'm basically saying, take the node, grab the terms off of it, and then I want to filter um, the articles that I'm showing by the tag. So that, that gets me articles related by tag to the article I'm looking at, except the article I'm looking at itself. Okay. Um, and I think that is, and I, did I put specification? And I said basically, yeah, I didn't specify validation criteria. I didn't need to. Yeah, I did. I said taxonomy term ID for tags. So it's not going to filter by recipe category here. I could have done that if I wanted to. Um, I think that's the only thing really special about this view. All right. Any questions? So the other thing really quickly I could do is if I wanted to take over the whole page um, and I didn't want anything in the footer, I can actually go back and add... Another one column here, or I actually have a one column. I'm going to add the recipes view, and this is, oh, use recipe. yeah, 
recipes collection. So this is a view. It doesn't have anything special as far as contextual filters. It's going to show up. I don't know why it's not showing up there. Um, hmm. I'm going to save the layout and s confirm that it's there. Um, so the recipe collection is down here. And if we look at this is the non layup older version. We have a block and we have a menu. So I'm going to go down to the bottom. Or I'm going to back to manage display for recipes. I'm going to add another two column section, except for this one. I think there'll be 67, th 33 again. Um, add a block, and this is the promo block com that comes with uh, comes with umami. Have it there, and then I'm going to add a menu. No, it's called footer. I'm going to add the footer menu. I'm going to change the title to tell us what you think because that's what they use in the Umami demo. Um, I'm going to save it. So now the advantage here is I have sort of what was previously on the block layout page all mostly mostly controlled here obviously i'm not controlling the header and everything but i have my art related articles here and then i have my recipe banner here uh the footer promo and then the the menu any questions all right so let me go back to the slides real quick so just an example of what this um so basically, we have the fields over here for the actual uh, article we're looking at. Then we have a view block that brings in related stuff. And then down at the bottom, we have more blocks. One is uh, a custom block and one is a, uh, a menu block. Um, so the advantage, one of the advantages of this is we d instead of manage display and block layout, which are kind of separate administration tasks and you have to sort of keep going back and forth to have these things show up here. Um, you have the, um, and then in block administration, you say, okay, if I wasn't using layout builder, I'd say, actually, I only want this view to show up on articles. Um, I have to set that too. So without layout builder, I have multiple administration pieces, multiple user permissions, and I have to deal with visibility conditions. With layout builder, I'm dealing with one administration page for the article. Um, one permission, anybody who can use Layout Builder for um, content types, and then I don't have to worry about visibility conditions because I'm saying only show this on articles. Um, there is an issue to add visibility conditions to say, well, I only want to show it if it has this particular tag or something like that, but right now uh, it's not there. Any questions? Um, all right, so I'm going to quickly go over uh, overrides or one-off layouts. Um, this allows individual entities, nodes in our case right now, to have uh, a unique layout. It's only available on the, actually it's default or full view, really. It's, it's whatever the full view is. Um, you, can't, uh, you can't customize the teaser for an individual node. You can only custom, customize the full view. Um, usually, full view is default. It's basically when you go to the page, that's what you can customize. Um, it starts from the bundle default. So if we are, when we override an article, it's going to start from uh, it's going to start from whatever we had in managed layout for <coughs> articles. But it's not going to be synced. Any changes I, after I override a article, it's not anything I change to the defaults for articles is not going to transfer over. And the only way you can get back is to revert the override altogether. Um, they're stored as a field. Um, they're not deployed with con uh, configuration management, um, but they work with uh, content moderation. So you can uh, have changes to a layout that you don't display right at once if you want to have it go through moderation. Um, there's two permissions for layout overrides, either configure any layout or actually three permissions, I guess, or two bundle level permissions. Either you can, can say, configure any override for articles, or you can only configure the uh, overrides for articles that you can also edit. Um, so that allows you, if you have complex 
um, permissions or a module that determines whether you can edit a particular article, that would, that would um, allow you also, if you use that permission, to override the layout. All right, so let's look at the example of a, let's do a simple recipe change. Actually, I turned off, um, I turned off um, accidentally layout builder for um, recipes, so I'm actually going to do it for articles. So we're on the article content type. I'm gonna click use layout builder. Hmm. That's strange. Oh. Interesting. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm, the settings are a little weird because it's using full content, which I've never, ever used. Um, I always use default. But on full content, if it's enabled, I guess, you have this allow each content item to have its own layout. I'm going to click this. And again... Right now I could unclick it, but as soon as I have one override, I can't unclick it because that would delete the override. Maybe that is not what I was expecting. Um, so I'm going to go to the article that we just edited, maybe? Give your oatmeal, well, that's it, yeah, okay. So if I refresh this now, there's a new layout tab. And let's say for this article, this image is so awesome that I want it spanning the top page. So I'm going to go to layout. I'm going to add a new section at the top. Add it be one column. I'm going to take my image. I'm going to drag it up into there. Now it's because it's a, a responsive image style. It pops out there. I'm going to save this. Uh, so now I have my big oatmeal image, and then I have the description, and then I have the related articles. So this is only in effect for this particular article. If I look at another article, um, it's going to have the same pattern. Well, I guess there's nothing related to this one. But um, it's going to have the same defaults. Any questions on that? Um, so... Uh, for example, this one, there's yeah. nothing on the related articles. Yeah. Can, it, can you make it go away? Um, I can't. Re when I was doing this demo, getting ready, I, I couldn't remember how to do that in views. It's a views thing. Basically, if you say n yeah, the no results behavior right. in views, that, you can do it that the way. view, I know how to do it. Yeah. But oh, take away this whole thing here? Yeah, so, and make the <coughs> page center. And, you know, uh, no. What about populating it with unrelated articles? If it yeah, you could do that with the... You could do... And again, you would do it with the view. So if you have a view, you could, un you could have the no results behavior of saying, if this one doesn't show results, show just any old article or whatever. Okay. So, yeah. But there's no uh, way to like, automatically get rid of that. No, not in core. Not in core if there's not any. Um... Actually, I think. Because you uh, defined the title. Yeah, I think actually if I had a results behavior that took away the title and this was totally empty, right. it would not show up. Yeah. Or it depends on your... Yes, the, uh, the, the text will not show up, but will it show up like a blank? Um, I am not sure. Okay. Yeah. Would that depend on the CSS? Yeah, it would probably depend on the CSS. It would be interesting if Core is not doing this to tag sections as empty. So you could say, okay, if this is empty, then pop it out or, or you know, sure. yeah. have it be no width. Or even add a class. Yeah. Empty. Yeah. Um, okay, so the other example I was going to show of overrides, actually, so the other thing I want to go over is custom inline blocks. So a new thing that we did with Layout Builder is you have your custom blocks that you go through block layout and you can add new custom blocks. You can, inside Layout Builder, you can add those same block types, but if you add it in Layout Builder, then they don't show up in your custom block library and they're access controlled by being inside, uh, by the thing that you embedded them in. So just to sort of show how this works really quick, let's say this article, there was a video related to this article that I wanted to put out in this page, but our, we don't actually have a video, um, we don't have a, a video field here, and basically 
it's a viral video and everybody's going to be bored in like two days. So we want to get it out on the page and we don't want to ask the developer to add a video field. So I'm going to customize this layout and I'm going to say, actually, you know, actually I know this doesn't um, have any results. So I'm going to remove that block here and I'm going to add another block and it is going to be a custom block. And these are all my standard uh, block types. And I made one called media picker. And I'm going to call this like, wow. And I'm, I'm going to display the title. I'm just going to add media. So this is using the new core media library. I'm going to click remote video. And I'm going to go to YouTube. And you're going to have a little view into my um, viewing habits here. I'm going to take this link and go back to my, where was I? Here, okay. So I'm going to paste this in here, add, I have the video, I'm not going to change anything, save. Uh, these are demos, I did, I'm not actually very interested in Kyle Reeves, but um, I'm going to take this, insert. Uh, I'm going to add this block, and so now I have a little video. Let's imagine it's actually about herbs, but you know, it's about Game Boy or whatever, so I'm going to save this. Um, so you can add this. This won't show up in my block library. Um, if somebody tried to view this video, uh, play, placing it somewhere else, if they didn't have access to this node, they could not see it. Um, the main reason we did that is conceivably you could put private files on a block and you should not be able to see those files if you don't have access to the thing you just embedded it on. Any questions on that? Um, we are, a, I think we're out of time. I do have other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, move with configuration. What's that? Uh, it does not. This is content. As soon as you override, it's considered content. Um, and all of the, 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 anything, yeah, anything I do in the override will not happen on when you move with configuration. But what if you do that in a general layout? Because blocks are this weird thing that are yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it has the same problems as as sort of block as regular custom blocks have, where if you kind of have to figure out whatever solution you currently use for getting them across, you have to sort of and figure out how that's going to work with layout builder. It does not solve that problem for you, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. It's, it's a content to, um, laid out with layout builder translatable. Ah, yeah. So no. And yes, sort of. So if you have translated nodes, it will show you the right version of the field. If you have translated views, it will show you the right version of the view. Um, in core right now, though, you can't have different layouts per, um, per node, and you can't have diff or per language, and you can't have different custom blocks. Um, there are two modules that have taken a different tact, a different approach of that. And one duh, 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 translations. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so basically, there's layout builder symmetric translations and layout builder asymmetric translations. I made layout builder symmetric translations, and basically, what that means is, um, any all your languages will have the exact same layout. But any of your inline blocks that you added, you can translate those. And the idea there is, the use case is, say you have six languages and you want the layout to be the same, but if you add custom blocks like text or whatever, you want to be able to translate that. But you don't want to, if you decide to add a new section on an override, you don't want to have to say, well, now I have to make that the same across six languages. So it veers towards manageability but you can't have, if you use it for landing page overrides, it's not very easy because then you have to, um, you can't have different language, different layouts totally per language. There's the uh, Swintle made layout builder asymmetric translations, which basically means like each layout's the wild west. You can have each language for the overrides, the wild west. Um, that is good for if really, if you, that I think mo is more localization. So you want, uh, one landing page, but if somebody visits it in France or in the French language, it, we want to be totally different. 
um, and they visit in the English language, you want a totally different layout. Um, that is hard to keep things in line. If you want them to have a similar layout, you have to make sure that you do it on each page. But it's easy to make it be totally diverged. So it's like sort of different use case. Um, for the defaults, you can't have different defaults per, um, I, th I think neither module handles defaults. All, uh, they just handle the overrides right now. Um, there's a patch in core that I was working on that handles both defaults and overrides, and it uses the symmetric translations, um, but we just kind of ran out of time. It's still there. I'd love to get back to it, um, but before Drupal 9, I definitely, well, we can't add any new features before Drupal 9, so it's definitely not coming out there. So the, the soonest would be 9.1 for something like that. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're restricted by time. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of slides there. Mm -hmm. Do we have a link to the slides? Uh, if you, I can put it up on the, the session uh, there. If you look at, um, I did the same session in Seattle, and it, it's linked there um, with a bunch of videos. Um, there is, I have this, all right, since somebody's leaving, I have this crazy example, this wild example of, um, of the tags page, changing it from this to this, which basically includes, um, this is just a simple, so adds recipes by tags, articles with the tag, um, related tags, but not um, that use the same, related tags used on the same articles. And then over here you have authors using the tags. And then if you look inside there, you would have uh, the user's articles with the tags. Um, so you have this big combination on the view on the tag on the term page of sort of all this combination um, Inside that one view is This is now a view of individual users which also uses layout folder for that particular view mode um, So it shows you how you can sort of combine this to get panels like behavior and it's not as powerful as it's not as configurable as panels is yet um, but it definitely gets you s some of the behavior you could get with panels. It doesn't have context. It doesn't have context through entity references, which I think would be really nice. But you can kind of get that behavior through views and using relationships. I think it's more complicated on the view side to chain the relationships, and it's harder to see than it than it was on panels. But a lot of that sort of related content or second tier related content is still possible. Um, say author to authors articles on the same tags um, but it's right now it's you have to really know views pretty well to get that kind of stuff done yeah I think I just missed it along the way but you showed uh, a situation where you can see the overridden nodes yeah so I'll show you that view uh, it's not in core um, but it's a super easy view to make um, so this is so these are all the ones you've seen more now than we had before all it is is a view, and I say I have one or a couple filters for published. I guess I wouldn't necessarily want that filter on. But there's a field for overrides called layout, and I just say when it's not null, and that gives you. And it's, it's really convenient for when you want to turn off overrides because you have to go out and, I mean, it doesn't actually give you a way, it doesn't give you a way to bulk do it. There may be a module that bulk updates fields like this and sets them to null. Um, but at least it would tell you where they are. You could go edit and say revert, revert, revert. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And also, to, if you're trying to keep a tab of what editors are doing, if you expect them to make overrides, um, then this would be a good way. Um, the thing I didn't get into is landing pages, which I made it basically, I made a content type. Um, called landing pages that has no fields on it and it only has the layout field on it. I turn layout builder on um, and I say each one is customizable. So what you do in that case is you just say um, I add content, I add a landing page um, and then I go to layout and I start adding stuff. Um, actually made a demo one of the home page. It's my home page test where I rebuilt the um, 
Umami homepage except with a bunch of views and any reference blocks and stuff like that. Um, so basically, the, the disadvantage with this again is it's content, not configuration. So you can't ship it to live. Um, but um, there is a module called mini layouts, um, which basically gives you the ability. These are, lay, I think I have it on. Um, these are layouts you can make that are configuration. Um, so this one I had a footer. So this, my footer has a couple blocks here. So the idea is I was putting it before inside the articles. I, I put this two section thing down there. I could make one mini layout with this module and put it multiple places. And also it's easier to ship this um, because yeah, this one's easier to ship because it's config that, that handles other config. Um, you can do this with core with a custom block type with no fields that has overwritable layout. So custom blocks can use layout builder too. The problem there is the custom blocks are content. So again, it's hard to ship. So mini layouts are, is kind of like the mini panels successor. Um, and one thing, I haven't looked at this module lately, but w one advantage is it's very light because layout builder is doing most of the work and it's just basically setting up an entity type that can use layout builder. So. I definitely, I, only 55 people are checking this one out. I, I don't, I'm not sure who made it, but it's, it's um, I think it'll probably be very useful. Another. Um, I've heard that um, the layout builder doesn't go well with uh, Bootstrap. Uh, is that true? Uh, there's an issue with Bootstrap because Bootstrap, um, by default, over uh, has its own implementation of modals and, and all the off-canvas tray and stuff like that. So last time I looked, if you go into the bootstrap settings and say don't use bootstrap modals, then it can work well. I mean, it's been a while, but um, that was the main issue that I knew about. What's that? Should work with any theme. I mean, I think the only real like gotcha probably is if if themes don't work well with this. But this now is in core for like a few years. So a lot of modules, a lot of themes have already um, make sure they work well with this. Um, but I mean, yeah, it, sh it should work. I mean, the thing is you're taking over, you're taking over a large portion, which would usually be your regions. So you, you probably do have to adapt your theme somewhat. Um, in my example, when I'm making the umami and I'm putting that contact, um, the the contact menu block in inside layout builder umami has special theming for that block when it shows up in the region so the colors are different so i have to i had to add a few lines of css to just say the text for the link should be green or whatever to make it show up in layout builder um, but besides that yeah it should work i mean i think it's definitely something you, you definitely want to test out with it it's not gonna it, it could run into problems just because themes are very opinionated but yeah. Can you, uh, yep. it on, can you enable this individual layout override on the node level instead of content type level? So have like one article that has like more images than the usual article. Um, you no, layout. you can't have an override without the defaults, but you can just leave the defaults as one single column and not use it for, yeah. No. Yeah. I was more worried about that. I don't want my contributors able to make their own layouts, but I don't want to, like every time they have a weird article yeah. to in and I don't have to do it myself. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, what, so what was it you say? So I want it's like uh, if I have like an article with like okay. more images than usual. You set yeah. up next. I am. Are you the room monitor? I'm gonna go ahead and turn off your yep. report. Okay. Oh, thank you.